All righty. Okay. Here we go. Thank you for finding me. Thank you so much for finding me. This is the mop up for November 20th, 23. I'm David Feldman. Please like this episode and share it. Don't forget to leave a, a comment. I read all your comments. And of course, subscribe to my newsletter and my channel. As I said, I read all your comments, and some of you wrote over the weekend saying I got it wrong when I referred to Nikki Haley as a former member of Trump's cabinet. It's interesting. Haley served as Trump's ambassador to the United Nations, and a few of you said ambassador to the United Nations is not a cabinet-level position. Well, sometimes it is, and sometimes it is not. All depends on who is president. Obama put the U.N. Ba ambassador back into the cabinet, and when Trump got to the White House, he, he left it there. So Nikki Haley was a cabinet official. Again, sometimes ambassador to the United Nations is a cabinet-level position, Sometimes it's not. It all depends on who the president is. Keep your comments coming. Texas Governor Greg Abbott endorsed Donald Trump for president on Sunday. During Trump's visit to Edinburgh, Texas, Abbott said, we need a president who's going to secure the border. Yeah, yeah. You know, like Trump did the first time he was president. He built that wall and Mexico paid for it. And the problem completely disappeared. According to the New York Times, Trump is planning to use vast swaths of open land in Greg Abbott's Texas, land along the border, to build massive tent cities to house migrants. The tent cities would be built by the U.S. military, would not need funding, funding approved by Congress, since as commander-in-chief, Donald Trump would be able to reallocate money from the Pentagon the same way he reallocated it to build parts of the border wall, which, of course, he completed. Mexico reimbursed us for it, and there's no longer a migrant crisis. Well, there no longer is a migrant crisis because there never was a migrant crisis. But this is what Donald Trump is running on. Cruelty to the most vulnerable people on the planet, migrants. It's all part of a plan uh, that's devised by Stephen Miller. Remember Stephen Miller? He worked in the first Trump administration and devised some of the cruelest and most draconian immigration policies ever in American history. It's reported that Stephen Miller once even suggested to Donald Trump that the military should fire on a boat carrying migrants heading into America. That's been reported. This is uh, Stephen Miller before he worked for Donald Trump, a uh, previous job that Stephen Miller had. The Times reports that if Miller finds his way back into the White House this time around, he would be savvier, more schooled in pulling levers of power in a second Trump administration, Stephen Miller would possess the skills necessary to implement a much crueler and harsher zero tolerance immigration plan requiring zero legislation. Working with lawyers from the Heritage Foundation, Stephen Miller's immigration plan would deploy sophisticated legal workarounds coupled with friendlier justices now in the lower courts and, of course, the Supreme Court, because a good number of those justices have been appointed by and are loyal to Donald Trump. Stephen Miller proudly told the New York Times that Trump would order ICE to conduct massive sweeps of workplaces, indiscriminately rounding up as many undocumented workers as possible. Brought to processing centers, the migrants would be sorted out while being detained indefinitely. He's open about this. Stephen Miller said sweeps would also be conducted by the National Guard and law enforcement officials on loan from red states, the sadists 
who just can't wait to punish somebody because it feels good to punish people. This is all part of Project 2025, a plan hatched by the Heritage Foundation to hit the ground running on day one of a second administration. Hit the ground running, really more than hit the ground running. They are planning shock and awe. It's what Steve Bannon originally wanted the first time around with the first four years of the Trump administration. But he and Trump and Stephen Miller lacked the resources and the understanding of how the administrative works and how it can be deconstructed. Now they understand it and they're getting a lot of help from the Heritage Foundation. Donald Trump's new plan is to implement a variation on what is called the Green Bay Sweep, a plan devised by Steve Bannon and Peter Navarro. Navarro was Trump's former economic advisor, who, along with Bannon, was found guilty of contempt of Congress after they refused to testify before the January 6th committee and explain their plans for a Green Bay Sweep in the halls of Congress on January 6th. We've gone over the Green Bay Sweep. Now, when it comes to immigration, the Green Bay sweep means Trump's border patrol would flood the zone so quickly that immigration activists here in America couldn't respond to the speed, scale, and efficiencies of these deportations, many of which would be illegal. Stephen Miller, a dead ringer for Heinrich Himmler, actually has another term for this. He's calling Trump's new immigration plan a blitz, a blitzkrieg, a blitz, a Nazi idiom describing the quick, overwhelming, and we've since learned methamphetamine-induced German invasions of France and Poland. By the time migrants, their lawyers, Democrats, journalists, Congress, inspector generals, and Biden holdovers in the Justice Department even realize what happened, Trump and Stephen Miller would have already removed these so-called undesirables from our homeland. And once these people, these undesirables, have been removed, including ones with visas, perhaps even U.S. citizens, good luck getting them back into America. We know that during the Trump administration, U.S. citizens were caught up in ICE raids and shipped off to Haiti, Mexico, and Central America, U.S. citizens who had a hard time getting back into the country because they weren't white. Miller is thinking like a big tech Silicon Valley entrepreneur. Move fast and break things. That's what the first 100 days of the Trump administration, round two, will look like. Move fast and break things. In Silicon Valley, when experimenting with new concepts like artificial intelligence or self-driving cars, the motto is, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than it is permission. Trump and Stephen Miller are planning a similar attack. Break things, break a lot of things and break them quickly. Then, when it's time to ask for forgiveness, flood the courtrooms with an army of administration lawyers to defend the policy while Trump's opponents try to pick up what's left of the pieces if they can even find the pieces. We've already heard Trump talk about immigrants, migrants, poisoning our American blood. We've already heard him refer to people he disagrees with as vermin. This is obviously not original, and he's not channeling Germany in the 1930s. He's not evoking Hitler. He's copying him word for word. Now, Trump is a goofball. Stephen Miller is not. Trump is a goofball. Trump is in the Donald Trump business. Trump runs the danger here of starting something that creates a life of its own. He ran for president in 2016 as a branding exercise. He didn't expect to win, but for reasons beyond his control, including Vladimir Putin, 
turned into something nobody could imagine, including Donald Trump, like actually getting elected president. You saw on election night how stunned he was and his family. They thought this was just a goof. Now, Trump, this time around, actually needs to get back into the White House because that way it will be harder to lock him up, you know, if he's president. And to get reelected, he's using the language of genocide to rev up his base. It's a political trick. He, he, does he believe it? Uh, I think he doesn't believe he believes it. I think he thinks the American people are stupid and they'll buy it. Then there are people like Stephen Miller who not only believe it, they're trying to implement it. This isn't politics for somebody like Stephen Miller. This is a hateful, hateful, mentally defective monster, Stephen Miller. This is not politics for Stephen Miller. This is ethnically cleansing America to make sure English-speaking white citizens maintain their power, no matter how outnumbered they are demographically. So Trump, and I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt here, I think he's just playing with fire. Setting things into motion, however, that can move way too quickly, especially with an accelerant like a homegrown terrorist attack, or a severe economic recession. So he's playing, if God forbid he becomes president, he's playing this fascism game with the ethnic cleansing. All it needs is an accelerant like a homegrown terrorist attack or a severe economic recession for him to save his ass by following through with these campaign promises to purify our blood. Trump is and isn't a fascist. He's a Trumpist. He's a Trumpist. In the end, there's no ideology other than what is good for Donald Trump. He uses the language of fascism, the tactics, but he, in the end, just want, he just wants what's good for Trump. He doesn't care about America or the ethnic purity of its people. He does and he doesn't. Uh, but the people he surrounds himself with, the people who gravitate to him, they not only speak the language of fascism, they are obedient to it. Stephen Miller, Steve Bannon, they have a vision for America that is as ugly as they are, and it doesn't include me or you. By the way, we're conducting a poll in our chat room this morning who do you hate more, Stephen Miller, Steve Bannon, Steve Tyler from Aerosmith, or Steve Perry from Journey? Why would you put Steve Perry on that list? That's just who, I love Steve Perry. Who do you hate more? That's what we're asking our chat room. Who do you hate more, Stephen Miller, Steve Bannon, Steve Tyler, and Steve Perry? from Journey. I don't understand how Steve... Who doesn't love Steve Perry? Anyway, back to Steve Miller, who everybody hates, including himself. Really just rotten to the core. Sulfuric. Just reeks of sulfur. The spawn of Satan, Stephen Miller. He, he just is. You, you, if you were to cast Stephen Miller in a movie as the bad guy, as the president's bad enforcer, the casting director would get fired. The director say it's too on the nose. This, we're not, this isn't the rise and fall of the Third Reich. Get me somebody who looks somewhat normal. He really does. Stephen Miller looks like something out of the Gestapo. <sighs> bad guy. Bad guy, and he does not wish us well. He hates you and me and this country almost as much as he hates himself and his parents. I heard he's adopted. That's what I've heard. Uh, 
But if he were my son, I'd say that too. I would say, uh, we just, uh, we didn't even adopt him. It's, it's something that we flushed five times and wouldn't go down and it blinked and we wrapped it in a blanket and put up with the smell because we felt sorry for it. This is what Stephen Miller told the Times about the big immigration plan. Any activists who doubt President Trump's resolve in the slightest are making a drastic error. Trump will unleash the vast arsenal of federal powers to implement the most spectacular migration crackdown this country's ever seen. The immigration legal activists won't know what's happening. Blitzkrieg, the Green Bay sweep, flooding the zone. This is uh, the Times in uh, last week said Trump's second term, they're already planning it. And this time around, Trump is saying no more Mr. Nice Guy. He, was, he says he was too nice. And Stephen Miller is saying we were too nice. Trump plans to only surround himself with cabinet officials and advisors who won't try to rein in his nativist instincts, people like Stephen Miller. On Sunday in Texas, when he got Greg Abbott's endorsement, Trump once again promised to reintroduce his ban on immigrants from countries with huge Muslim populations. In other words, the Muslim ban. If you remember, he, has, he had to finesse it. Originally, it was just going to be, I ban Muslims from coming into the country. And he discovered through the courts, you can't do that. So he went back and came up with a ban that forbids people from countries that have large Muslim populations. But we know what this is. It's a Muslim ban. And it won't stop with just migrants and Muslims. It just doesn't end there. Everybody thinks they're safe when it comes to people like Trump and Stephen Miller. Donald Trump has talked about solving our nation's homeless problem much the same way he's talked about solving the migrant crisis. And there is a plan that I'm going to get to at the end. There, there is a grand vision here that even he subscribes to. I'll get to it in a second. He has talked about solving our nation's homeless problem, not with affordable housing, rather by rounding up what he refers to as urban campers and placing these urban campers in what he calls tent cities, where they will be given food and offered drug rehabilitation. But Trump cautions only if they want to be helped, because Trump warns that a lot of these urban campers they don't want to be helped. That's what they are. They're urban campers. They're goof-offs. They're not homeless. Urban campers. It's a lifestyle they chose. That's how he's framing it. Don't feel sorry for them. They didn't lose their home or fall through the cracks. No, they decided to go camping in the city. Here is Donald Trump earlier this year talking about how he's going to solve the homeless problem. We'll ban urban camping wherever possible. Violators of these bans will be arrested, but they will be given the option to accept treatment and services if they're willing to be rehabilitated. Many of them don't want that, but we'll give them the option. We'll give them the option. Many of them don't want that. They don't want to be rehabilitated. We'll give them the option. Uh, what is rehabilitation in his mind out there in the 10 cities? Well, it'd be picking lettuce for free. Please continue, mein Fuhrer. We will then open up large parcels of inexpensive land, bring in doctors, psychiatrists, social workers, and drug rehab specialists, and create 10 cities where the homeless can be relocated and their problems identified. Problems identified. Yeah, I mean, this is where my relatives ended up, in tent cities. They were relocated, uh, out of sight, out of mind, and their problems would be identified. You identify their problems, not their problems, what kind of problems they are for Trump's vision of America 
And so you know which camps or ten cities to put them in and what uh, kind of stars they should wear and uh, how you dispose of them. These things happen very quickly when a society is breaking down. Ten cities uh, where nobody can visit them. Ten cities out in the middle of nowhere. You know, our immigration justice system is ten cities. You can't visit the, the relatives of yours who are in detention centers right now. It, it takes two hours to drive to these for-profit detention centers. Lawyers can't get there. The media can't get there. This is his vision, you know, doctors, social workers, because, you know, we have so many doctors and social workers already, mental health specialists who are going to help the homeless in these tent cities. Have you tried to get a mental health worker to help you? Like they're going to be flooding to these tent cities. You know where this is going. You know where this is going. The Times says Trump on the campaign trail has promised to deport migrants and immigrants uh, on an unprecedented scale. Uh, he's talking millions a year. The Times says that unlike Trump's first term, there is a distinct possibility he will have little resistance from blue state mayors and liberals because the so-called migrant problem has intensified with COVID waning and more families from Central America fleeing oppressive living conditions. The Times says, politically speaking, more big city Democrats are moving to the right on immigration, on the migrant crisis, as their social services grown under the weight of other things, but why not blame it all on the migrants being shipped to our city from Texas by Greg Abbott, right? The, 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 the blue state, the blue cities like New York, very convenient to blame whatever problems we're having on the migrants instead of maybe raising taxes, asking the corporations to pay more, maybe build uh, more affordable housing. The migrants are very convenient scapegoats. So perhaps more so than in 2016, Trump is going to run even bigger in 2024 on the issue of migrants because blue state Democrats have chosen to blame homelessness, crime, and urban decay on a busload of migrants. That's, that's what they're doing. They're doing what the Republicans do. Democrats are now relying on migrants because immigrants have always served as a dependable scapegoat for their own greed, for blue uh, state greed or policy failures. Speaking of policy failures, here is the abhorrent New York City Mayor Eric Adams this summer, unable to address the homeless crisis, blaming the migrants because he's incompetent. This issue will destroy New York City. Destroy New York City. This issue is going to destroy New York City. I've played this before. Go ahead, Mayor. Never in my life have I had a problem that I did not see an ending to. I don't see an ending to this. I don't see an ending to this. Wow. Tender your resignation. I've played this clip before. If you don't see an ending to the, the migrant crisis, then you should not be mayor. You know, this is, you're not equipped for the job. A couple of busloads of migrants and all of a sudden the homeless shelters are at full capacity because you suck. You suck as mayor. That's why the homeless shelters are at capacity. You have no administrative ability. 
you suck. Resign. Well, you're probably because of this turkey scandal. You're you're probably your days are numbered. But for a mayor of New York City to say he's never seen a problem that he couldn't solve except for the migrant crisis in the shadow of the Statue of Liberty, where all four of my grandparents arrived. Go F yourself, you incompetent idiot. On the campaign trail, according to the New York Times, Trump has sold his mass deportation plan as being based on what he calls the Eisenhower model. Trump looks back fondly to what was then called, and this is what it was called, and I apologize, but this is what they called it, Operation Wetback. And that's a a slang for Mexicans, and that's what we called it uh, in the 50s. In 1954, Eisenhower ordered the deportation of millions of Mexican immigrants who came to America during the 40s to work our fields as well as perform other jobs in order to relieve a World War II labor shortage. Well, it was World War II and putting the Japanese in concentration camps that created another labor shortage as well. We have a wonderful history that we should never teach our kids in Florida. Do not teach this in Florida. So once the soldiers came home, uh, the Mexican migrants were no longer needed. They were rounded up and sent back. Families destroyed. Babies who were now citizens were sent back to Mexico. Very ugly, another very ugly period in American history. Trump's plan, the golden, he wants to bring back the Eisenhower model. Trump's plan is not limited to new arrivals. He wants to remove undocumented immigrants who have been living in America for decades and who might have already parented children whose citizenship is guaranteed by the 14th Amendment. Birthright citizenship, or anchor babies, as Donald Trump calls them, they will not be recognized. Trump will deport them first and then invite the children to file lawsuits to gain re-entry from whichever country they are sent to. That's how they're going to do it. Break things. It's better to ask for forgiveness than it is for permission. So they will accidentally deport citizens, children who were born here with their parents, and then everything gets tied up in the, in the courts. You know, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, who's running for vice president, also wants to eliminate birthright citizenship. We played the clip of him admitting that he is a recipient of birthright citizenship. Both his parents came to America from India. His mother and father conceived this monstrosity, Vivek Ramaswamy, here in America, and they were not citizens. But because he was born here, I mean, the biggest argument for getting rid of birthright citizenship is Vivek Ramaswamy. His parents didn't become citizens. His father never became an American citizen. Vivek Ramaswamy's father is not an American citizen. His mother became an American citizen after she had this homunculus. So he's the beneficiary of birthright citizenship, Vivek Ramaswamy, but he wants to get rid of it. These are bad, bad people, bad people. He, I put him in the same category as Stephen Miller. Bad, 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 bad people. Uh, morally and mentally defective. There's something wrong with their brains. And uh, if we had, anyway, watch, watch it, David. Watch it. Be careful. You're alive. Don't get angry. Trump recently promised to deport any foreign students who participate in rallies supporting the Palestinians. 
He said he would order his State Department to conduct what are called ideological screenings of all foreign students who apply for visas to study in this country. This is the McCarran Act. This is how we didn't allow Charlie Chaplin back into the country. Trump also has plans to deport tens of thousands of refugees from Afghanistan who were brought here after Biden pulled our military out of the country two years ago. Most of these immigrants from Afghanistan are considered political refugees who need to come to America because they cooperated with the American military during the war. And if they go back to Afghanistan, they would surely be punished by the Taliban upon their return. This is an abstraction for most of us until you meet somebody from Afghanistan who has to go back and they're non-persons. They, they, they have no country. Put yourself in the position of a, a dreamer who came to America as a three-year-old, a four-year-old, whose parents are undocumented, and you're getting this constant message from Republicans, Republican presidents, that you're not welcome in this country. You fear ICE. The country that they want to send you back to is not only gang-infested and authoritarian, it's a country you know nothing about. It would be the same as sending you back to Guatemala or El Salvador. They left when they were three. And somehow, in America, we demonize the people we need to come to this country. We need these people. I, I, I'm a broken record on this. It's Economics 101. Our population is in decline. We need more people to prop up the economy as well as our social safety net. We have a, we, we have a population implosion. We need these people. The Times says there's a 1996 law that allows for what are called expedited removals, where the United States government can move uh, very quickly and deport anyone who has been in this country for fewer than two years. It's much harder to deport someone if they've been here for a while. Tell that to ICE. Uh, and thanks to this 1996 expedited removal law, it's very easy to deport recent arrivals. Now, this law back in 1996 was intended for catching recent arrivals and then quickly sending them back. They call, I think they called it catch and release, like it's fish. How dehumanizing. It was intended for Border Patrol to grab someone just as they came in and turn them around. Trump has been trying, when he was president, he tried to expand its use. The courts didn't back him up properly. They didn't file the cases in the right way. He, the court said it wasn't intended for ICE to spread out around America, rounding up immigrants and deporting them if they've been in this country fewer than two years. But now Miller, Stephen Miller, envisions a legal workaround where ICE, and ICE already is traveling around the country, rounding up undocumented Americans. But now they're talking about doing it flagrantly. Uh, millions. Miller unveiled to the Times how he thinks this could be sold politically. He says Americans will welcome ICE. They, they'll be grateful that ICE is engaging in these mass workplace raids where undocumented workers are shipped off to detention camps and then sent back to where they came from because it would create a tight labor market in order for unions and American workers to thrive. They can demand higher wages and benefits. This is uh, a lie. He's lying. He doesn't care about higher wages or unions. The Republicans care about 
our, our minimum wage is stuck at seven dollars and twenty five cents since 2009 because Republicans fight anybody who tries to raise it. He desp- he despises unions and workers. And this is what it's really about. Uh, it's partly about I'll get to the workers in a second. For Stephen Miller, it's partly about being a fascist, empowering a secret police, ICE agents, who answer directly to the president of the United States. ICE serves as the president's palace guard. They answer to him with little to no regulation. Try contacting a press officer from ICE. Impossible. Private prisons and detention centers, that's, with the Trump administration, that's where we would be heading, where undesirables, citizens or non-citizens, could be placed indefinitely. But they'd be these tent cities, for-profit tent cities. So what is this really about? What, why is Trump getting on board. Well, we know the business model for America, the business model for slaughterhouses, construction sites, nursing homes, and the entire agricultural industry is bringing in undocumented migrants and their children, using them when they're needed, scapegoating them when they're no longer needed. There is a uh, there's a multi trillion dollar shadow economy here in the United States that corporations and the upper middle class and the upper class exploit in order to hire workers who don't demand anything. They don't want benefits. They don't want a livable wage. They don't want safe working conditions. They would never, ever unionize or complain. It's a compliant workforce. So. This country has always salivated over migrants, using them, exploiting them. So getting rid of these migrants permanently would take a major bite out of the bottom line for corporations and rich people. And it would leave even more jobs in this country going unfilled, which would cause wages to go up. Earlier this year, Florida Republicans were forced to meet with Hispanic leaders and they asked them to tell undocumented Americans to stop fleeing Florida uh, for fear of getting arrested. Ron DeSantis had this law passed where he was cracking down on migrants, right? And because Florida under Ron DeSantis passed these draconian restrictions on migrants, immigrants, seasonal workers have stopped coming to Florida to work the fields and rich Republicans who own farms, slaughterhouses, food processing plants, restaurants, panicked this year. Where are our workers? What did you do? So we played the video over the summer of, I'm going to play it again. These are Republican state legislators meeting with Hispanic representatives, assuring them that these laws that Ron DeSantis just passed, cracking down on migrants, assuring Hispanic leaders these laws were just, quote unquote, for show, unquote. They said, the Republican lawmaker said, these laws don't mean anything. The legislators insisted the crackdown is purely political. It's not real. Tell, tell the migrants to come back to Florida. They won't be arrested. Okay, so I'm going to play the clip here. What would be the real purpose of marshalling the federal government, empowering the police, the National Guard, and of course ICE to round up undocumented workers and place them in tent cities, especially when you have, I'm going to play you the clip, when you have these Republican lawmakers begging 
Hispanic ministers to tell the migrants to come back. Well, the, the big picture that somebody like Stephen Miller is envisioning is an even cheaper source of labor. He's thinking prison labor, but a form of prison labor that is more regimented and reliable. So it isn't a scattered policy where they're biting themselves in the ass by passing these laws. Uh, here is Florida Republican State Representative Rick Roth. He owns uh, a farm. He's, he's, he's a state, he's a Republican state legislator, but he also owns a farm. Here he is back in June of this year, joined by several other Republican state legislators who all voted in favor of Ron DeSantis's cruel immigration bill. Uh, these Republicans are meeting with the Hispanic Ministers Association of South Florida in June, telling them to please go back to your community, tell the migrants, come to Florida and work the fields, tell them that they shouldn't fear these new laws. The new laws are just political theater. This is almost everything you need to know about Republicans and immigration, okay? Remember, they're, they're saying this is just political, okay? And then I'll get to why the end game for Republicans is to eventually arrest them all, not send them back, keep them in tent cities, and make them work for free. I'll get to that in a second, but here is... Uh, Florida Republican State Representative Rick Roth. This is more of a political bill than it is policy. It does give more police state powers going forward to deal with immigration, but still, this is mainly a political bill. Thank you very much. Okay, we're, we're, we're just trying to give the police more power to be arbitrary and arrest who they want and torture who they want. That's part of the fascist playbook. Here he is, here's more. It does give more police state powers going forward to deal with immigration. Right, okay, next. This bill is 100% supposed to scare you. La mala noticia es que este, este proyecto de ley 100% tiene el propósito de darles miedo. I'm a farmer and the farmers are mad as hell. Yo soy un agricultor y los agricultores están bien bravos. We are losing employees. They're already starting to move to Georgia and other states. Estamos perdiendo empleados y se están mudando a otros estados como Georgia. Unbelievable. More. It's urgent that you talk to all your people and, and convince them that you have resources, state representatives, and other people that can explain the bill to you. Es urgente que ustedes hablen con sus personas porque tenemos representantes estatales que pueden explicarles este proyecto de ley. We passed a bill that promises to round up undocumented migrants and arrest them and send them home. But explain to them it's just political. It's just for show. We have the best we had the best president in my in my life in the last 30 years, and I'm still supporting Donald Trump. I love my governor. He's the greatest governor. He's the greatest governor in <laughs> right. So he passed this law that's terrorizing migrants. I'm losing money on the farm because of Trump and DeSantis, but I'm a Republican and I have no spine. So before I go, I just want you to know that I love Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump because I'm a Republican and I have no testicular fortitude. Don't be mistaken. The Republicans have a plan. They just don't want anyone to know what it is, including Representative Roth. American companies right now have a labor shortage. Millions of jobs are going unfilled. Corporations bring in migrants to do seasonal work, but the government doesn't want to provide these migrants 
with affordable housing or a social safety net. So the Faustian bargain, Trump and Stephen Miller, and the Republicans are going to make between corporate America and the most vulnerable people, the migrants. They're going to make a deal with them. They're going to say, you're never going to become citizens. You're going to be permanent felons who are in this country illegally, and you now have a choice. You can be sent home to your gang-infested third world country, or we keep you in a tent city where you are fed and loaned out to pick our fruits, vegetables, work our slaughterhouses and construction sites for free. That's where this is heading. Free labor, detention centers, for-profit detention centers, tent cities. That's the plan. That's Stephen Miller's evil plan. And corporate America, they, they would lap it up. And they would lap it up. We know it's already happening in our prisons, thanks to the loophole in the 13th Amendment. 40% of all prisoners in America are performing jobs for either the state or Fortune 500 companies while working pennies on the dollar. In Texas, they get paid nothing. We have black prisoners in Texas picking cotton for free. But our prisons are at capacity, and you can only lock up so many Americans until it starts looking unseemly, like right now. American citizens have rights, but what if you start locking up non-citizens and keep them in tent cities, in for-profit detention centers? You keep them as a permanent source of free labor. Yeah, make America great again. Turns out Republicans aren't trying to bring us back to the 1950s. It's the 1850s. This is their vision. When you look at somebody like Stephen Miller, when you look at somebody like Stephen Miller, that is, that is his plan. That is his plan. Read about Stephen Miller when he was in high school in Santa Monica, California. This is his plan. They hate humanity. They hate themselves and they hate humanity. It is locking up a permanent class of felons who aren't American citizens. That's the end game. And it has the added benefit where the fascists can harness the power of homeland security. I've always been wary of the word homeland in homeland security. It has the added benefit of giving ICE and Homeland Security the power to deport any immigrants who harbor pro-union democratic ideas. There's also the added benefit of placing such a strain on our courts, such a strain on the ACLU, uh, immigration attorneys, human rights activists and human rights attorneys. There'll be no resources left to address the sheer volume of ordinary American citizens who are being accidentally held in these detention centers. And you get a Republican-controlled Senate and a Republican-controlled House, they'll just waste away in these detention centers. And they already do. Never forget, never forget, according to the ACLU, half the American citizens being held in the Fulton County Jail, where all 19 co-defendants in the Donald Trump RICO trial were, got their mugshots, half the people being held in the Fulton County Jail have either not been charged or not indicted. And those are American citizens. 
And then, of course, there's the cruelty. See, cruelty is the reward for most Americans who stand to gain nothing from this. Here is Donald Trump talking to uh, uh, Donald Trump talking to cops in New York. I think it was out in Long Island. This is early in his administration, telling cops not to be gentle with suspects. This is the cruelty. This is for the people who have nothing to gain from any of this other than the pure sadism, the satisfaction of bloodlust. And when you see these towns and when you see these thugs being thrown into the back of a paddy wagon, you just see them thrown in rough. I said, please don't be too nice. Like when you guys put somebody in the car and you're protecting their head, you know, the way you put their hand over. Like, don't hit their head and they've just killed somebody, don't hit their head. I said, you can take the hand away, okay? There are the cops applauding that. Applauding police brutality. That's what's in it for the poor schmucks, the middle class schmucks who don't get to participate in all the benefits, financial benefits from fascism. You get to watch people who don't look like you get roughed up by the cops. This is fascism. <clears throat> and trust me, it's not going away when Trump goes away. There are fascists in the Senate like Tom Cotton, the senator from Arkansas, Josh Hawley from Missouri. There are theocratic fascists like our speaker, Mike Johnson. This will never go away. You can never stop fighting fascism. Fascism is always with us because we will always have the mentally ill. I think Jesus might have said that in the Apocrypha. I don't think it made it to the final cut. We, the mentally ill will always be with us, said Jesus. And there are the mentally ill Republicans who often use their politics to work out their grotesque childhood traumas. For example, the odious and disgusting Roseanne Barr, has been opening for Donald Trump. Last week, she opened for him at his moderately attended rally in Florida. Now, we all know Roseanne is a disgusting human being, and she has struggled with multiple personality disorders, has swung wildly from the left end of the political spectrum to the right. She got fired from her ABC sitcom three or four years ago for her racist tweets, and she has struggled with her identity as a Jew, sometimes claiming to be a Zionist, while at the same time saying horrible things about Judaism. She's not well. She's one of those people who needs help, not a television show. She seems to have found a home in Trump world, which always rewards spectacle and mental and moral defectives like Roseanne Barr with their tenuous grasp of reality. Here she is opening for Donald Trump last week. This is where people go from being sad and pathetic to a danger to the community. You, this is where you go from feeling sorry for Roseanne to she needs uh, help to, to protect the rest of us. Aren't we all fed up with the deep state bullshit? <laughs> In the bullshit! <laughs> the Magador to kill that goddamn bull! 
and the bullshit. Kill that goddamn bull. This is Donald Trump is about to to come on to this introduction. That's uh, Roseanne Barr. Also opening for Trump in Florida is the equally detestable Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Trump's former press spokesperson. She, uh, in her first year as governor of Arkansas, this is her first year, she's already embraced child labor, attacked the LGBT community, got all the don't say gay laws passed in her schools, while cloaking her contempt and hatred for the marginalized. She cloaks it all in this phony adherence to some sort of Christian orthodoxy that is something Jesus would never, ever recognize. Here is the disgusting Sarah Huckabee Sanders before Donald Trump came out. The truth is, it's not even a question anymore between right and left. It is normal versus crazy, and the left is doubling down on crazy. The left is doubling down on crazy. Roseanne, any thoughts on that? Kill that goddamn bull! Anything else you want to say about the left doubling down on crazy, Roseanne Barr? And the left is doubling down on crazy. Bullshit! All right. I'm David Feldman reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak. A lot of dangerous people out there. And I'll leave it at that. Please like this episode. Please leave comments. Correct me if I got anything wrong. Please, if you've read any interesting articles, share them with me, either in the comments section or over at my website. And while you're over at my website, please subscribe to my newsletter. Please subscribe to this channel. Please like this episode so I remain in your feed. And please share this. That's the best way to help is to to share this episode. Show it to people who you think will benefit from it. Uh, Thanksgiving. Are you going to be spending Thanksgiving with your crazy uncle? Or are you the crazy uncle? Thank you to Bob in the chat room. Oh, the poll, the poll. We have a poll. Which Stephen do you uh, hate most? Is it Stephen Miller, Steve Bannon, or Steve... Uh, hang on for one second. I have to turn the sound Front off here. Uh, Thanksgiving. Okay, here's the poll. We have 1,062 votes. Hello, everybody. Uh, Let's see, 1,064 votes. Here was the question, who who do you hate more? Stephen Miller, Steve Bannon, Steve Tyler from Aerosmith, Steve Perry from Journey. uh, I'm kind of surprised by this. So I'll start at the bottom. Uh, Steve Perry came in, no, I'm sorry. Steve Tyler from Aerosmith got 2% of the vote. Apparently, people aren't following his legal troubles. Uh, More people hate Steve Perry from Journey? His name shouldn't even be on the list. 3% hate uh, Steve Perry from Journey the most. So Steve Perry comes in third. Coming in second is Steve Bannon at 29%. Wow, this is great. Stephen Miller, 66% of you with 1,100 votes, 66% of you uh, hate Stephen Miller. It's, you're, Stephen Miller, people hate you, Stephen Miller. People really hate Stephen Miller. All right, that makes me happy. Uh, Thank you all for listening. I'll see you tomorrow.